It's the 13th of April 2023. I'm Chris and you're listening to Tips from the Top for episode 933. Tips from the top. From the top floor. Tips from the top. All right. From the top floor. Hey, hello and welcome. It's Chris and you are listening to Tips from the Top for the longest running photography podcast on the planet. I think it's like 17 or 18 years now, which is kind of crazy. Um, so what have I been up to lately? I've been doing recordings for various podcasts, including Happy Shooting and The Future of Photography, which, yeah, tends to be a bit more regular than Tips from the Top Floor. Uh, we've just we've just talked about your digital photography legacy. I really like that episode. And um, what else have I done? I went to visit my parents for a long weekend, which... It's always a bit of an endeavor, seven hours of driving one way. So that has like two days to a visit. Um, oh, 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 and I've been working on a maker project for the for the upcoming Abbey Workshop, which it's still the favorite, most important event for me in the year. Um, we've been doing this since 2009 annually. Um, and this year will be 33 people doing plus plus Boris, myself, and Monica, so 36 people in total doing nothing. But uh, photography stuff for a whole week in May. And one part uh, that we established a few years ago is to make something photography adjacent with our own hands, a maker project. Because, I mean, that this is where you want to be anyway, being able to to learn a craft and something. So a couple of years ago, we made a large format pinhole camera, out of cardboard. Um, last year we we ratcheted it up with a with a front bokeh generator, which was an electronics project. And uh, this year we well, I can't say much because I don't want to spoil the surprise. That is part of it, um, but uh, it it involves wood and a tripod head. That's all I can say right now. Um, and I've been together with uh, Jochen, uh, one of the community members, uh, we've been planning this, the details on that. I've been ordering materials, tools, and so on. So, yeah, this will be awesome. And I'll be able to, to show and tell and talk more about it once it's over four weeks to the, to the Kloster Geister workshop. Anyway, uh, today, good friend of the show, Alan Attridge, is back, and we will discuss a whole host of new developments and updates, including an updated film photography book, a French influencer law, semantic segmentation in real time using AI. That's a mouthful. Uh, DP reviews, archive woes, a new film stock by Fuji, uh, the Mickey Mouse, Leica, and Dali coming to a browser near you. Well, let's go. Welcome to the show, Alan. How are you? Oh, we're going already? Yes, we're right in the show. Whatever what was before 50? that is, I will record this after we finished recording. Oh, okay. I know how technology works now. Okay. <laughs> it's called editing. It's called wow. editing. Just in case oh, there's, a, there's a disaster here and then I can prefix that and, and prepare people. I have no idea what we're going to... Well, I do have an idea what we're going to talk about. So, okay. um, uh, Alan Attridge... Host of The Two Hosers, photographer, filmmaker, um, um, cabinet maker extraordinaire. What else is there? Uh, the extraordinaire seems excessive. Oh, it's it's so so much fun following your progress um, from the first like I, I'm I'm not saying there were I mean compared to some of the of course the, the top shelf youtubers that have done that for their entire life this mm -hmm. is a journey where you can come along with someone who's who's teaching himself woodworking right that's the, that's the idea that was the basis of our our show the two hosers photo show uh which we started 12 years ago uh the idea was that adam the guy i i do the show with I had zero knowledge and so the idea was that the the listener could associate with Adam and follow along and learn with him. And that's kind of what I wanted to do with the, the woodworking is I had a base little bit of knowledge. I knew enough to be dangerous to myself. Um, and to say that I taught myself, that's kind of the, I guess, a falsehood. I mean, I, I follow along all these brilliant people on YouTube who are, who are excellent with their time and their skills and uh, very open to sharing. 
And if you pay attention and do what they say, you can, turns out you can build a pretty solid knowledge base. Isn't that, isn't that just so amazing? Uh, I mean, over the last, I don't know, 20 years, the, the, the whole, the whole game of learning something new, learning a new skill has completely moved over to online, to YouTube, to, to tutorials. And uh, we have all developed new skills that, that are now uh, also include uh, being able to tell a bad tutorial from a good tutorial. <laughs> so right. it's really amazing how this, this whole landscape in, in photography as well has changed, totally changed. Part of that is your fault though your fault and uh, a couple other people too of course uh david hobby was he, he, oh, yes. me, he was the the big one the big game changer because up to that point i mean he was doing a blog he started off doing the strobist blog um but up to that point anybody i ever encountered who knew anything was very protective of that knowledge mm -hmm. um As, as sort of the sort of built-in exclusivity of, of, no, I've got it, no one else can do it. Yes. In fact, when I was in, in, in film school way back when, 1998, wow, I need to catch my breath, hold on. Uh, 1998, there was a, a film production uh, uh, audio house in town where I was going to school, and they, they'd done a few motion pictures, uh, like low-budget things, um, I won't name them because I don't want to out these guys, but I basically, my, 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 my teacher knew them quite well. And I said, look, I don't want to be a sound guy, even though I'm doing a podcast years later, but I don't want to be a sound guy, but I would like to know all there is to know about everything really. So I would love it. If I, I will volunteer, I'll come here, work here for free. Hmm. I just want to, I just want to be here and watch what you guys do in the, in like the recording studio and the dubbing and like the ADR and all the stuff that you guys do. I just want to, I just, I'll help. I'll sweep the floors. I don't care. <laughs> They said, no, no, thank you. We, 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 we don't want you looking behind the curtain. And I thought, oh, wow. That was my, my intro to that world of forget it. I know something you don't, and it's going to stay that way. Uh, and then that, that changed. And then, and then I started reading Mr. Hobby. I met you and, and you have, you have, I mean, on a personal note, you've always been very, very open with, Hey, here's how you do this. Or here's how I do this. Why don't you try this? Here's what I know. Take it and run with it. And that kind of inspired me to do basically this exact same process. If anybody ever wants to know anything, I'm happy to tell them. And what is this, besides them getting good at stuff, what is the side benefit to you? Have you noticed anything? Well, it it's the karma principle at work. You give something, you get something. I mean, that's pretty much, the, that's, that's what it yeah, comes you, down to for me, you know? But what do you get? What do you, what, I'll tell you what I got. I'll, I'll make this real, well, much shorter than it needs to be. Uh, it, I, I got better. Yeah. Oh. 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 Uh, obviously, the teacher learns most. That's really mm. the thing. If you if you try to help other people understand something and be better at something, that, that's a, that's a growth. Uh, that's a growth. That's the secret to growth for yourself. Totally. Plus, adding like basically putting competition out there, I find to be a very healthy, uh, he healthy process. Is is if you know you you, you want to be the fastest lion, you better get out there. So, so watching your YouTube channel, the wood, what's it? What is it again? Holzfeld. Give me the title again. Holzfeller. I, I've been. Well, you tell me. Is that is that a bad name? Should I change it? Well, Holzfeller is uh, is German for like uh, lumberjack. So. Lumberjack. That's the joke. But uh, I might just go with the old yellow pages. No, trick. leave it. Call leave it. it. A, ABC a, one two three woodworking. Leave it. It works. Um, okay. Um, so, so the, here's here's my question. Um, there's it's 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 awesome to watch you become better in that process and you're, you're documenting that are you also planning to have a second podcast or a second youtube channel up that, that documents your your changes over time of how you document it the photography of it the videography of it the editing your shows changed initially it was a lot of you talking to the camera and now you're doing mm -hmm. more more montages that you talk over so you have more visuals so like the whole style has changed over over the i don't know last 10 episodes it has that, that was a built-in uh sort of that was my plan from the beginning was to have the the initial videos be longer and basically then and then the the, the later ones be referential it, to those it, earlier ones it's becoming 
it's always a show and tell, but it has been more of a mm -hmm. tell in the beginning. It's now becoming more of a show. Yes. Oh, good, good point. I never thought of it in that respect, but... Uh, and of course, yeah, as we know, a picture says more than a thousand words, and that is true. Yes. So, so uh, this the 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 later ones, they 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 are they are much easier to consume. The first ones have a lot of information in them, like you explain yes. a lot of details, which people have to extract by watching now more. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, it's I, I I think the entertainment value has has increased this way. Well, thank you, thank you. I I appreciate that. I think part of it too is is, uh, at least my initial thought process was if people are going to come along, there's there's millions of of YouTube creators out there, right? And so if you want to watch anything about you, you can find anything you want on the internet, on Google, on whatever. And uh, I wanted to make this a little, little bit more of a, a, a personal journey. So you can associate with me, whether you like me or hate me or somewhere in between, usually it's in between or whatever, but the, uh, you can associate with that person and it becomes a more a, a personable story right. that you want to follow along. And that was the beginning. We sort of introduced who I am, I hope, a little bit, and then get a little bit more into the denser uh, process. So what's next for Holzfeller Woodworking? Well, that's the thing. The, the next move is... <laughs> How many other projects have you lined up? Are you going to change any, any of the videography again? Are you moving ahead in that respect? Oh boy, is that, how is that going to change? Eventually, I, I'd like. I, I'm I think need it's to all hire it's somebody. All fully planned out, right? All the detail for the next twenty episodes, right? You do have a production uh, plan, don't you? Uh, no. Next one's going to be a birdhouse. Spoiler <laughs> alert: I haven't even started yet. It's a birdhouse, but for money. So a money house, but it doesn't sound that good when you say money house. A gold house. <laughs> that's a that's that a bank, right? The money house is a bank. I don't think those exist anymore. From what I, I'm reading the news, the uh, yeah. no, the the, 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 the this, it's, this is actually a lot more of a, a logistical nightmare than I thought it would be. I, I uh, the baseball team I play for, we have a couple teams in the Bundesligas in in the in the German softball and, and baseball. We charge admission fees, but it's a it's a whole gray area right now. And so I proposed to our board, hey, instead of actually having tickets and an admission, why don't we create a, like a don not I don't like to say donation box, but like a admissions box, a tip jar where people is, is kind of, but it's 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 like that, you know. Uh, but the idea is, like, or we're called a tubing in hawks, and I know hawks have a nest, but a tip nest ah, doesn't work. That's what the bird reference. Ah, I see, I see. However, so I want to make it, and now the idea is that the front will be made of plexiglass, so that people. I, I think people are more apt to tip once they see that there's other people have already paid. So you'll you'll glue a few bills to the inside to make oh, it look like point. it's already full. I'm going to put a few Canadian dollars in there. There you uh, go. Old, there you go. A couple loonies and toonies. <laughs> but so the idea is to have that, and then it has to be able to open and be securely locked. And also, there's a lot more going on than I thought. And so I wish I hadn't volunteered. To make this, but uh, also well, we open on Saturday, so I better get going. There you go. So and and of course the filming of it makes the whole process about twice as long, I guess. I that's a, a conservative estimate. Yes. <laughs> it, it is, oh, that, that's and the that issue. does not include the editing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm getting faster at the editing because I, I do. That's the one thing I think. I think I have a um, an advantage over most of the YouTubers. Oh, you do this. As, a, you do this as a profession, right? As coming with a film film background, learning yes. woodworking. It's okay. I know. I know what to shoot. How much footage? This you is get. when I started the podcast. 18 some years ago this is when i started tips from the top floor i had, a, had an audio background so the whole recording and editing that was not the, the big deal it was the no talking about a topic every week that was the initially three times a week so i was crazy Do you remember the then. the very like when i first started the the hosers like you were you were working down the street from my my apartment yes. uh, back in the french quarter there and uh and, and you came by like, you know, like a, a month in and saw my process and you were horrified at my uh, lack of audio knowledge. Oh, and, and, and of course, I was probably very 
very uh, un- insensitive about it in the way I gave you feedback. No, but that's just German. <laughs> this is me being a German, yes. Very direct. Oh, I appreciated it. You said, okay, you said, hey, like, aren't you using a, a compressor? And I was like, like, to blow the dust out of my what studio? Like, what that? are we talking about? <laughs> And uh, and you set it all up. You you got it all set. Here here's what you want to do. Here's how a compressor works. Again, back to being very very uh, open with your knowledge. And you said, here's what you want to do. Yeah. And uh, and, and I, I did it. And so now my uh, I can hear. I don't ur- urge anybody to go back and listen. But if you listen to the early episodes, and like if you listen to one every from every season of our show, you can he- I can hear the difference in the quality yeah. as I got better at audio production. Well, but this is again, this is an ongoing learning process, and uh, the the amount of resources out there is just amazing. So no one no one has that excuse anymore that no one told them. No. <sighs> so um, of course, links to Holzfeller Woodworking and to Two Hoses, everything is in the show notes. Let's do the news. Let's go into uh, what's up on the news right now. And um, yeah, I've uh, put together a little bouquet of things. I'll toot my own horn first, just uh, to get this going uh the film photography handbook you'll remember the early days of that 20 oh when did i st- i think that was 2015 when we wrote the first edition um, i had it in my hands yesterday it's, i'm not even kidding you it, it, awesome it's just re- been released in the third edition we have updated it twice which i find so amazing given that that film photography was pretty much gone for a while um when mm-hmm. digital came in um for those who don't know the film photography handbook it's it's pretty much if you want to learn about film photography and if you want to learn to do film photography and develop your film that's it's all in there has when you want to learn when you want to learn yeah of course of course so so it's it's uh, it's it's for it's for experienced photographers but new film photographers will have a good time um there's hybrid process in their film digital workflows for digitizing negatives and uh and using using cu- current means of of helpers in terms of different apps and that kind of stuff and um covers all the formats 35 120 4x5 large format um and so on in the updates this time you know this is this this is this this kind of an innocent email from the editors asking mm, we think we might want to update it again just to keep it current with like films being taken off the market new films coming mm-hmm. on the market this kind of stuff because we have tables in there for films and so on and then this just and this is the second time for us that we update this book and it's like this oh it kind of spiraled out of control and now we have a new chapter in there an instant photography of polaroid cameras and replicas and instex formats and camera backs and an entire new thing on color film photography and uh, on digitizing negatives. We had the scanning method in there, but we haven't really t- talked a lot about the digitizing using a camera with a copy stand and a backlight and a macro lens. So that one is in there in a lot of detail now. And even even a whole thing on crowdfunding for film photography projects. So we have, uh, yeah... <laughs> so it's more work than we anticipated, but hey. But this means you're you're seeing a real uptick in the interest in in film, though. Oh, it, film film is is not dead at all. I mean, it's, it's a, there's a sig- right. significant renaissance in film photography. We see a lot of interest. If you look at if you look at uh, uh, Fuji Instax, for example, that is mm-hmm. their cash cow. That makes so much more money than all the digital photography stuff combined the cameras and so on and lenses and so on the the whole analog uh, experience with the uh, one of a kind images and stuff that you can actually hold in your hand as opposed to just swiping across on your screen that is that is so enticing to an entirely new generation so yeah my kids included my kids have a lot of questions um so I, I had shot film way back in the in the old days. I, I we had a dark room at my high school when I was in grade nine, uh, sorry ninth grade in America, but uh, grade nine we call it. And uh, so I, I, I we did black and white photography. I learned enough again uh, to get by, and then put it away for a long time. In terms, like I shot film, but I, I had it all processed at a lab, and then um, met you again way back in 2011, and. Uh, and then, and then you you were shooting a lot of film, and I said, I, I want to start this again. But I had no idea where to start. 
And film, and let me tell everybody, film, shooting your own film and processing it and, and all that involved is an extremely complicated process made up of very <laughs> simple procedures. If you break it all down, which which is what you do, so, especially in this book, you tell people, first of all, you don't know what you don't know. That's always in, in life. But so you don't know where to start. What do you, like, what do you buy first? Like, wh what do you get? Well, you, a change bag, maybe, if you're doing it. But it's probably in the book. Uh, but you break this all down into, into very, very simple things. And then all of a sudden you put them all together. And uh, I won't say you've created a symphony, but, you know. Oh, song. it's like with every new thing, you will you will build something, and the 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 level of satisfaction that still comes out of the, mm -hmm. like pulling that developed film out of the of the, out of the film tank is that's the moment for me. It's like okay, there's something on it. It's good mm -hmm. negatives. They have the right density. They look good there's definitely enough stuff on there to 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 digitize to work on to keep on working in lightroom or whatever you want to use it's yeah it's a very satisfying process it's it's with with everything where where you where you put your own work in mm -hmm. with your with your cabin it's the same thing you're building something and that is going to be special for you I Absolutely. explain this to my kids. This is how I raise my kids, it, just in life, not photography or, or, or related or, or anything. General, just yeah. in, in general, um, I hear a lot of people talking about the idea of happiness. And, and, I, and I, I personally don't buy into that, that idea of happiness. Happiness is fleeting. McDonald's sells a happy meal. Good luck. In five <laughs> minutes, you're not going to be happy. But instead of happiness, focus on fulfillment. And and that and that to me is a, a film photography is a great example of it. I still love digital. I, this is the we're done with this argument, right? About yes. digital versus film, two separate animals. Um, but there is something wildly fulfilling about oh, shooting a uh, roll of film, especially in times where things are becoming more and more virtual, and just mm -hmm. just the, the the whole maker aspect of it is yeah, it's fulfilling. Anyway, it's on the market now. It's out. There's a there's a a code if you if you get it from the publisher. That's Rocky Nook. Um, let me see. The code is Film Forty F I L M Forty. That gives you forty percent off. So and this is in English and German, correct? The, the film photography. Yeah, yeah th third edition is out in German and in uh, in English. Yes. And then French soon. I'll, I'm working on the translation right now. We do. We do have. Um, we do have uh, weird translations for. The, for oh, the, let me let me check. Uh, we have an Italian translation for the film photography book. I think the second edition. <laughs> there's, okay. there's, there's usually a publisher making these deals and then telling us that oh, by the way, it's going to be translated too. So it's out in uh, in German. It's in Chinese. Mm -hmm. It's out in Chinese, and yeah, German. So German, English, Chinese, and Italian, which. Well, I'll yeah, be doing it's the mind Kevin blowing. It's mind blowing. Yeah, I bet. Totally. I, the fact that you you've written more books than I've ever read, so I'm impressed. Well, the, the translations I have not written. I have I have I have helped with the English translations because I speak English, but uh, Chinese I have, and Italian I've, I totally have to rely on the translator. So, okay. Anyway, look forward I, I, to anybody out there. I suggest if you're thinking about even shooting film, pick this up because it breaks it all down. Makes it it makes you want to go out and shoot film. As I said, it was in my hand yesterday. I haven't looked at it in a while. I was cleaning some things up. Which, oh, here's the which edition the do you have? Which one is the first one? I think it's number zero zero two. Yeah, we should we should we should update you. I'll I'll make sure you get a a copy of the new one. Awesome. One in German or in English? Well, I have it in English. I'll go <laughs> German. Let's do. Give me the Quebecois one, and we'll. Uh, yeah, that, that, will, that will that, that will follow sometime. <laughs> yeah. All that. right. Let's let's go on and do a little quick fire round of news because um, there's a lot of things happening. Um, here's a here's a really fresh one, which uh, is photo adjacent, which is the the French government is proposing a a new law, an influencer law. Mm -hmm. which is is uh, is aimed at increasing like social media transparency so 
that would include having to disclose Photoshop and filters. And especially now, if you look at some of the AI filters that can make you 30 years younger without it looking weird in a live video, that kind of stuff is happening right, right. now. Um, which, again, like the, 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 all, all the effects of this stuff, if you look at uh, the Instagram disease, as I call it, which means like uh, people are getting problems with their with their own body image and these kind of things because they're always presented with perfect perfection um right and there, a lot of that is fake so um that's kind of the the idea behind that it's a, a proposal right now so it still has to be signed off by the french senate um and uh, they're looking at okay so here's the penalties they are looking at up to six months of jail and up to mm -hmm. 300,000 euros of a fine. Okay. For not disclosing. What do you think of that? Uh, is this new? This is a new problem where, where, where advertisers or influencers, we call them something else, mm -hmm. but they're lying to you. Uh, I remember <laughs> back in the day, I mean... There was there was there was retouching. There was uh, magazines aren't real. None of this is real. It, true, true. And and you and I, we know that because we are on the other side of that fence. We know how the process works, how the sausage is made. Sure. And a, a lot of people will subconsciously just accept that as reality for sure. Right, but okay. So the argument, like that, my mom, who is, I assume, in her seventies. Um, lifelong smoker, she uh, always claimed that, oh yeah, we didn't know. We didn't, we didn't know smoking was bad for us. As if we thought it was broccoli back then. In, in, the, in the 60s, we thought smoking was broccoli. Uh, they knew. Your folks knew. Your grandparents knew. Everybody knew. It was an accepted risk. I, I, don't, I don't like, and this, is, this gets into a much deeper conversation about, about society, uh, but why are we abdicating uh, personal responsibility. Well, if it wasn't, if it, if it weren't for for laws, we would still be going to a fine dining restaurant and someone at the tables around us smokes. I grew up in that time, and this was not going away by telling people that it's bad for you. So there's there's two sides of this argument. So. Well, that, but that part's a, a physical, you, you know that, mm, I understand, there's a physical smoke think, coming out that's affecting other I, people. I think the main question for me is not even, is that a good idea or not? It's uh, mm -hmm. the, in, the enforceability of it. How would you even go about enforcing something like that? Well, like when you enter a photo contest, oftentimes, back in the day, you had to provide a, 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 a uh, negative. A, or a raw a file negative. these days. Now yeah. a raw file, but... How, who's who's in charge of of the Instagram but look raw at, files? Look look at the look at the I don't know Snapchat live filters that use AI to change your thing. You can't there's no raw file. There's no right way to to undoubtedly prove that what you're seeing is real or not real. So right. So <sighs> but, but, uh, but assume it's not real. That's it. That's it. Uh, assume that all those influence influencers, easy for me to say, that you see. <laughs> are not real. If you see these guys on, on the, the, every time, once in a while, a, a, a YouTube ad will pop up about how to lose 40 pounds in two weeks. Well, that's not a thing. Unless you're an amputee. And then maybe, like something like that, then, then I could see something happening. But other than that, you're not going to lose 40 pounds in two weeks. It doesn't matter what warnings you put on there. You should know that. Anyway, so I, luck, think, I think I think I think one one of the one of the main issues here is uh well one of the things they have to do in order to be able to enforce anything like that is to define what an influencer is anyway. So True. Anyway, next up in the newsreel. Um have you heard of Sam by Meta? Uh now that you sent the link, <laughs> I have. Yes. So 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 here's the thing, uh, Meta, Facebook's parent company, uh, they've introduced right. an open source AI model called SAM, stands for Segment Anything Model. And mm -hmm. um, the, the, the claim, the initial claim, I read this in Petapixel, and uh, the, the, I think their article did missed the mark because um, they pretty much said, oh yeah, and it can, it can cut out things from video and 
photos, which like, okay, we have been able to do this for a while now. If you look at Adobe's uh, subject selection and that kind of stuff, um, mm -hmm. works relatively well. So like a like an AI based mask and this kind of stuff is is in there. Um, but what that model does, and I think that is what where it's interesting, is that it's um, it's offering s uh, semantic segmentation. So imagine you have a like a classic example person on the beach. Click uh, click on them, selects the entire person. Fine. Um, now imagine that you are trying to select someone on a picture who is cut in two, cut in half by a table or something, right? Mm -hmm. Something's going in front of them. So that model by Meta knows that the legs are part of that upper body. They are, they belong together. So um, it's a semantic thing. It looks at the object, not at the boundaries and at the um, at the 2D pixels. It, it understands objects and knows that this upper half of the building that's cut through by a bridge visually belongs to that lower half. And now you can select the entire building. And it works in real time in video. And that's, that's impressive. where it is becoming interesting. I think it's not perfect, but um, segmentation, semantic segmentation in real time, open sourced, we will mm -hmm. see a whole lot of applications. Um, also in the photo world, because, I mean... That's one of the big issues with with computational photography is the bokeh uh, generation, the the artificial bokeh, foreground, background separation. Um, that will be so much easier with an algorithm or with a with an AI like that. Um, it, color correction, like you want to correct the entire person that is cut in, like standing behind a tree, mm -hmm. and you just select the person behind the tree and co collect correct color or do other retouching on them. Um, yeah, so I, th I think this is quite interesting. Also, the fact that they are giving this away. It is fantastic. I, I have used the... It, it's only to, in, very recently I started using the the um, object selection yep. in Photoshop. Up until then, like I and I do it quite... I wouldn't say quite frequently, but one of the things I do for my uh, previously mentioned um, baseball teams, I create the game day uh, magazine covers called the Spieltag uh, talk. And, um, and so we do like a real kind of a sports illustrated looking fun thing. And oftentimes I'll shoot the, the, the subjects in the studio and cut them out and put them in front of some cool something. Yeah. Um, more of a design than I am faking them into anywhere. It's not often I do that, but the point is I need, I need to cut these people out and, uh, and it was it's basically this year I started using the object selection. And it's up, pretty up much a one then, click, it's a one click operation now. It is. It yeah. and it does a phenomenal yeah. job. Up until now, it, it did a reasonable job. And uh, but I did I I could do better on my own. It just took, you know, about a hundred times longer. Um now it it's so much faster. Um and this I mean this looks like it to do in video too. I, I know. Jeff Greenscreen's pretty upset with his invention being uh, obsolete now. <laughs> well, is it, there's another there's another AI company that has sort of began obsoleting this, and it's Runway M, Runway ML, which they offer an online in the browser video editor that does things like that, where you can have a person walking through a frame and you can green screen them by clicking on them, and it's almost real time. And but it, this one I think takes it uh, one notch up. So kudos. Um, have you followed the DP review, the demise of DP review? The I have. I've read a little bit about it. Um, I actually have more questions than answers. If you're looking for answers, I'm, you're out of luck. Uh, what? Why? So why is it? So so we we can agree that at least in let's say the 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 earlier days of our digital photography for me that's at least true DP review was a really important resource because I wanted to see all those reviews and I was much more of a pixel peeper back then and uh, the, you had all these discussions and all the tech details and they have pretty much followed the entire history of the, the of digital photography in a very detailed manner they have they've built a huge archive of tests and these kind of things and um, well, in terms of digital photography, they they were there before I was, and yeah. so in my world, they've always existed. Right. So, so um, the story is Amazon 
owned them since 2007. They bought them. They had some integration with reviews and links and affiliate stuff and so on. But but felt quite hands off. So it was never like huge branded and Amazon and so on. And now Amazon has decided that uh, that's not needed anymore. They are laying off people as the entire tech industry does. And right. so um, the DP review fell by the wayside. And that created a huge like uproar in the community. Even even people like me, who I haven't been there a lot in the last five years, but um, there's a history with that site. And I have every now and then watched some of their YouTube videos, some tests and stuff. And uh, generally a thing that, yeah, it, it's kind of, it kind of belongs to this community. And um, and then there was an uproar, and then uh, Petapixel actually picked up the two hosts and uh, give, give, gave them a new home, as in the, if you go to youtube.com slash Petapixel now, that's a new channel that will be uh, filled by Chris and, oh, sorry. Anyway, um, so, 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 and then, and then there was the next wave of people going, hey, but we need to archive this. If this... Right. This is a huge archive of information um, that can't just be deleted. So um, the Internet Archive, archive.org, Wayback Machine and so on, these guys have uh, have said, yep, we are going to try to archive that. We're talking about millions of pages. I mean, it's a, a lot of stuff there. So right. um, they, they announced to... Um, to archive it and make it available as as a single archive somewhere, but then and this is the latest development. This is the update. Um, apparently, someone at Amazon has heard the the outcry of the community, and they are um, they have now announced that first of all they will continue posting articles for a while. Not clear. Uh -huh. The official cutoff date was two days ago. We're recording this on the 12th of April. So 10th of April was the official cutoff date. So that was sort of extended. And the second thing is they also announced that they want to uh, provide this archive for free. So Amazon is keeping that archive online. So um, sort of half, half good news. Um. I I I I don't I haven't you know gone deep into why they're canceling it or or shutting it down. Uh, that happens. Things I, change. I do I know. Guess. I I I, ha I have no. I don't know. But I have a very good feeling why. If you look at cameras, um, the thing that you and I and a lot of us have been preaching forever is that the tech isn't that important. It's you, the photographer, right. who's important. And I have the feeling that for a few years now, we've been tech-wise at a point where that is actually true, where it doesn't really matter in the same price point. You can pick up any camera and it'll be good enough for whatever you need. And a lot of people feel that and the, the influx of smartphone photography, which is pretty much taken over, um, is, mm -hmm. is, uh, uh, is, is fueling that as well. So we are looking at uh, a time where there isn't that much need anymore for in-depth tech reviews because every camera has enough megapixels and has enough dynamic range and has colors that are nice. And the, the autofocus, that's my big one. That's the big... the For sports, yeah, the, sure, of course. They will for, always yeah. be specialized. But this this is a niche. This is becoming more and more of a niche, the tech nerdery mm -hmm. about photography. Yeah, no, I can... And I, I haven't read a lot recently because it, it does for exactly what, what you said. It is a little bit through no fault of their own, a little bit repetitive. It's, okay, yeah, it's got this, it's got this. It's like, hey, guess what? You should buy this camera. All of them, every every one of them. You're you're fine. Don't worry about it. Exactly. Uh, so that I get, but the the what what would be in it for Amazon to completely delete the archives? I know they're not now, but what, what was their initial thought process? Oh, uh, they're, again, big, big layoff round, as in all the tech companies, and Amazon is a tech company, so right. they're. I'm not really sure. I'm. They're, they're prob probably probably. Uh, some people in the office are looking at the bottom line and say, "Yeah, it's not making enough. Let's get rid of it." Possibly. Okay, you could just leave it there. Is there is there digital rot that's going to happen? I don't know. No. Okay, I'll talk not to it. Jeff next time we have coffee. <laughs> I'll. Okay. Uh, 
Jeff, Jeff B. I don't want to give away. I don't give his whole name, but I know a guy at Amazon named Jeff B. You no, know, he's not at Amazon anymore. Up. He's out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, as far as you know, that's right. That's right. All right. Next on the list is um, well, uh, is it good news? Fuji Film is planning to launch a new color negative film, which awesome, wonderful new films, but it looks like that might be replacing the Superior Extra Four Hundred. So. Which is the Superior Extra 400 is kind of the um, go to the DM market and pick one up. This is the Kodak Gold of Fuji, pretty much. Right, right. It's the, it's a it's a standard, well balanced for daylight uh, negative film ISO 400, and that new one is called the Fuji Film 400 color negative film. So uh, I I don't know why they're doing this. It's certainly generating some news in the film community. Um, it might it might guarantee us a fourth edition of the film photography book because that we, we need to update the film the the film tables of course. Um, what is what is this going to cost if I walk into a DM here? I have no idea. I haven't. I haven't. I have. I have done all my film shopping for years in the in on the on on the online, and I have mostly not bought these kind of films uh, not because i don't like them but because a few years ago someone donated to me like four kilos of 35 millimeter expired color negative film which is awesome so right I'm still i'm still feeding off that Right. I get most of my film, actually, I just, I steal it from your office when you're out looking, so. Yeah, and I wouldn't even notice, because there's so no. much of it. <laughs> no, no, it's good. It's an excellent price. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't even know what this would cost anymore. I mean, back in the day, if you wanted to go shoot a roll of film and get it processed and get, you know, 24, 36 prints, whatever it was, it would, soup to nuts, it would cost you about a buck a print. By the time you bought the film, get the processing done, and and get. I home. mean, the, the the film isn't isn't officially um, the the film is listed on like BNH Photo and other sites already, but it's it's listed as not available yet. So the price is not fixed yet. Um, the rumor I've heard is that we'll, we'll, you'll be buying them for like in the US for about a ten tenner per roll. Okay. So film film prices. They don't sell as much anymore, of course. So sure. film prices have gone up. Of course, they have. So mm -hmm. um, that's that's the rumor right now. We'll soon find out. If they're going to all this effort to 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 replace something or make a new, introduce a new film, there's got to be. Obviously, they're smarter about this than I am. There's got to be a market there, and so I I take this as encouraging news. Well, it could it could also be that there's some chemicals that are not feasible to get anymore because they're too expensive or too poisonous or whatever, and they have to change the emulsion and they use this as an excuse to 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 be, to beat the drum and get some publicity out of it. Possible. I again, I'm not working for Fuji, so I don't know. The canister is green. So I get it. Okay, I see what they're doing. <laughs> All right, next one up. If you if if I say the word Mickey Mouse camera, what comes to your mind? If you do an image search on Google Images for Mickey Mouse camera, if I do a Google search for Mickey Mouse camera, I'm going to be put on a list uh, that I don't want to be on. Uh, no, you you you're buying something mm. out of cheap plastic for your kids, like Mickey Mouse head as a camera, the yeah, the ears, yeah, the, I, the, I, the, the did I have a Mickey Mouse camera as a kid? I went to Disneyland a couple times when I was a kid. You and probably did. I did. I I, I think there was probably a, a Kodak put something out like uh, the little the little what was the one the one thirty no the, not the one thirty four was the little mini film one ten the one ten that you pr to pretend you were a, a spy. Uh, in a Le Carre novel. And uh, so I think we had that. It was about four bucks to buy the camera, with included the film, I think. So that's uh, what I possibly, imagine. Possibly, yeah. So so Mickey Mouse camera, um, yeah, when I read this, I thought of, of these, and then I clicked the article, and it's a Mickey Mouse camera by Leica. Right. <laughs> This is funny. So we're we're not looking at a at a Mickey Mouse lookalike camera, of course. So what they've done is they have limit they have a limited edition, as they do a special limited edition of the Q2, which is a uh -huh. an awesome camera. And um, 
they have like where you'd normally have the leather around the camera. That's where they put uh, Mickey Mouse 100th uh, anniversary Mickey Mouse Disney uh, anniversary edition with they call it the 100 Years of Wonder. Again, 500, <clears throat> 500 uh, is the limit. And uh, the, the leather part is now like, looks like parchment paper that they draw the comic strips on and some original right. Mickey Mouse drawings and things like that. Okay, so they made this strictly so that you would talk about it on your show. Which I'm doing. I'm giving them free. Yeah. Uh, well, let, let me put a damper on that because it's, 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 it's a bargain. I think it's a bargain. 6,200 euros. Come on. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't actually know who this is for. And and it's and it's about at least here in Europe I think it's like a few hundred bucks more expensive than the basic Q2. So Right. You're paying you're okay. paying you're paying several hundred bucks for the styling and having Mickey on your camera. Well, on the flip side, if you're a potential camera thief, this is going to look like something you're not going to waste your time on. So <laughs> very likely. <laughs> so you can walk in through any anywhere you want. So so this. here's here's the aspect theft protection. Um, yeah, I'm I'm with you there. Okay. All right. Last but not least, have you played with Edge browser? No. That's Microsoft's uh, web browser, which is Chromium based. So it has the same engine under it as that that Chrome has or Brave Browser have and other Chromium-based browsers. And uh, they were the first ones to integrate um, ChatGPT into the browser, right? So okay. you, you, can, you can, in Edge, um, even on the Mac version, you can go click on the Bing logo and then open up Bing with, um, which is Microsoft Search Engine, with ChatGPT integration. So you can ask it things like, um, uh, yesterday, uh, I've recorded Happy Shooting, and we, I, I, I tested it and put in, when is Happy Shooting live? Because we do a live stream once a week. And it, it told me that it, uh, it first told me, oh, Happy Shooting, by the way, is a podcast uh, about photography with Chris Marquardt and Boris Nienke. And it, I don't know uh, where live is, but there is a web page, happyshooting.de slash live, where you might find out more. So it went, it was really helpful and a conversational chatty tone. And then it gave me like what links it visited and other potential questions to ask by mouse click and so on. So um, they are, they have been in bed with open AI and, and getting their AI on board um, and trying to become a more interesting browser because their market share is like under 5% right now, I think. So I'm literally just hearing that it exists from you right now. Yeah. So again, Bing search engine was always a joke, but um, they are they are they've put Google on alert. Google has it, it's said that Google had a had a code red because of Bing integrating AI uh -huh. into the into the search. Anyway, so um, the the reason I'm bringing this up in a photography context is that they are now also going to integrate Dali into Edge browser. So you'll have a tool in there that will allow you everyone to type in what uh, picture you want, and then it spits out four pictures created by Dali to use in say your blog posts or whatever I, I, whichever uh, i don't even know what the licensing exactly is and so on so okay uh, if, uh, this is this is news i have tried yesterday in in the edge version on the, the mac version of edge but it wasn't in there yet so i don't really know what the terms are but uh, i think it's it's getting that that kind of esoteric technology in front of a lot of new people that wouldn't have had access before that that does sound very very cool. Um, where where I, I hope this is headed. I say hope. I mean, there's there's a plus and minus to it. But one of the things where I think this kind of thing will come in very handy is is in video is shooting B roll footage of really boring things. Which uh, if we could now generate those to to cover up our edits and sort of illustrate our point, 
that's going to streamline the process. You could use amazing. this for, for storyboarding, for example, right? Yeah. So exactly. Uh, yeah. So yeah, to do, well, to do a storyboard ahead of time of what you are going to shoot, which I've never particularly done. A, I don't like it, and B, I'm not very good at sketching. And so this would probably be a, a very good example of uh, a great use of this. I got to go storyboard something. Are we, are we done here? Well, if you next Holzfeller woodworking <laughs> video fully storyboarded, like oh yeah, the entire process. What's the birdhouse going to look like? <laughs> You can you could you could have edge uh, Dali's edge integration give you ideas for what it should look like. Make a birdhouse. Make a birdhouse for the tubing and hawks that is has plexiglass in front and takes money and looks cool. Looks it, it needs a bit of a black forest look or something to it. Like I was actually going to ask you, you know? what are you doing with the old invisible camera? Because I might just use that to hold the money. Um, it, it's, it's, I can, I can almost see it from here. It's in that, <laughs> in that cabinet over there. <laughs> I just introduced my kids. My kids are, are now nine and 11 years old. And I just introduced that to them. They watched the video and thought it was the greatest thing of all time. <laughs> um, yes, my, my, my daughter is a fan of a particular, uh, book and movie series. And once I told her that connection, she could not believe it. So that's an off the air situation we'll talk about, but the, <laughs> um, right. uh, no, like I, I, now I'm imagining what would, so like way back in the, in the old days. And I think it, I, all these things in terms of video and movies and stuff like that, but very beginning, like around like 1981 or 82, Francis Ford Coppola basically revamped the whole, the whole movie industry. He was shooting like video on, on like for rehearsals for the, like the outsiders, for example, a movie he made, and, and people couldn't believe it. It was mind-blowing. And then so I imagine what would Kubrick uh, have done with this back in the day? Like if he was shooting uh, 2001 or, or anything that he would do, he, he was infamous for shooting a million takes of nothing. What, what would he have done? What will, what will the AI Kubrick do with this AI in the future? That's what I want to know. <sighs> Runway ML, we mentioned this earlier, now has Gen 2 out, which is their video generator it's a dolly for video okay so there's a whole new visual language developing in front of our eyes that uses ai to create things out of thin air and it's 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 we're living in exciting times i think i'm looking forward to seeing what happens with this and also uh scared to death uh, the, the, at the same time everyone is crapping their pants anyway we <laughs> are at the end of this episode alan thank you so much for your time you are um at the is it the two hosers or two hosers i always have it's to, just two hosers.com two hosers.com occam's razor chris i have yeah i don't go to the website i have it yeah. i have it subscribed you in my i've i have it subscribed in my in my podcast client um and your youtube channel Holtzfeller Holtzfeller woodworking. Woodworking. It's easier to go to the to the show notes and click the link that I'll definitely put there. Um, thank you so much for your time. And thanks for having me. Have a good one. And that was it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for leaving a rating or a review wherever you get your podcasts. You're awesome. And of course, thanks to Alan for stopping by. Make sure to visit the Two Hosers podcast and his YouTube channel, Holzfeller Woodworking. Link is in the show notes. As always, you can leave feedback for the show at tfttf.com slash hi. Uh, for example, let me know if and how you're planning to use Dali in your photography or if you'll test Fuji's new color negative film, tfttf.com slash hi. Also, thanks to all of you who support the show on Patreon. Patreon is awesome, not just as a means of financial support, but it's a huge incentive boost for me to bring you new episodes. Thanks to all of you who support your favorite creators. Find out more at tfttf.com slash support. Oh, and of course, 
Patreon supporters are first in line. You will get to listen to new episodes before anyone else does. What else? Oh, I also finished booking hotels for the Eastern European Electric Photo Road Trip in September. So that one is getting closer and closer. Still two spots open. Find out more at discoverthetopfloor.com. That's discoverthetopfloor.com. And now go out and take amazing photos. Be nice to each other. Make sure to spend some time in the spring sun. And of course, happy shooting. <laughs>